Then they so goofy. Talk about what they gonna do to me. That was mm -hmm. the one. Salute me shoot. Yeah, yeah. FR, FR. <laughs> Big come a crib like Tuki. New Jack used to start pookie. Used to pop shit like Dookie. Shooting that Uzi, I told tag for real. Play pussy get fucked like Vagisil. I'm in my bag for real. Watch out for niggas in envy. They take you down for a penny. These niggas me mugging, hate that I'm thugging. I walk around with my semi. I was in the trap like Gucci. So more bags than Gucci. I'm in my bag like Balenciaga. Swag in the fashion and drip designer. Bought a new Draco chopper. Had a dream about killing my partner. Niggas be fake, gotta watch them. Smile in your face, they plotting. Niggas be jank trying to rob you. Niggas so snake dead, fuck around poppy. Niggas be pocket watching. So you gotta keep pocket rocking. I'ma buy me an app, go shopping. Two bands to get me a body. One man to get me a body. Five hundred to get me a body. Nowadays I ain't gotta spend money. Young crash jumpers dead, kill anybody. These niggas so goofy. Talk about what they gonna do to me. Salute me and shoot me. Big come a crib like Tukin. New Jack, you just serve poop. Use a pop shit like Dookie. Shooting that Uzi, I told tag for real. Play pussy, get fucked like Vagisil. I'm in my bag for real. Dude, it was incredible. This guy really does move weights. I've been moving weight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Max Up Cream, everybody. It was great having you, dude. Thanks for coming through. <laughs>
And I used to just dive in, yeah. just jamming this nigga music, getting high. Yeah. Shit like that. So I've been fucking with Tyler. So by the time we, we met and linked up, it made sense. You know was what I'm it, saying? What was the first time you linked up and how did that go? Uh, that nigga Schoolboy Q, back when he dropped, um, what's the album when he got the brown paper bag on? I don't know. I, I know the one that's got like an orange and red cover with all yeah. the, like the veining on the front. Hell yeah. That's probably the Habits of Contradiction. Or like Blank Face. Blank Crash Crash Talk. One I know. Crash, Crash Talk. There you go. Yeah. So Crash Talk 2019. We was all on stage for his shit. Mm -hmm. I met him there. Then we went to Yams Day. Yep. At Yams Day, Rocky was back there. He Rocky's complaining about some shit, like some serious shit. And Tyler kept making jokes. And then Rocky was like, "Yo, Tyler, stop fucking making jokes." <laughs> but like the whole time, every time Tyler make a joke, I'm goofy as hell. I'm mm -hmm. laughing. Like everybody, think I'm just gonna beat him up, rob yeah. him, some yeah. shit. So I'm in the corner chilling. But every time Tyler make a joke at Rocky, and Rocky get mad. I'm laughing like a motherfucker. And then like Rocky had people out the corner of his eye and be like, yo, Tyler, shut the fuck up, yo. <laughs> and then like, you know what I'm saying? Tyler peeped it. And then shit, like we was walking out. You know what I'm saying? We chopping up. He said that he heard my music. He was in motherfucking London with on Rick Rubin. Mm. And then Rick Rubin had played the album for him. Shit like that. I'm like, oh yeah, so we for sure got to work. How about this, like that thought, Rick Rubin played the album for somebody? This shit crazy. This shit, like this whole thing take me down the iceberg. So. When um, Tyler told me that, I text Hove, because Hove and Rick Rubin like this, and I was on Rock Nation at the time. And then I texted Hove. How fucking cool is your life? It's boring. I told you it's I know, but like, I just, like, <laughs> you, you did, you're sandbagging, bro. Your life's fucking cool, bro. You texted Hove. It's cool. I text him. I'm like, yeah, Tyler said he got on to Rick Rubin. I want to work with Rick. Hold on. Hold on. Let me text Rick. He texted him, showed me the screenshot. He like, yeah, the shit true. You know what I'm saying? We'll figure something out. I ain't never worked with, with Rick, but man, Tyler got a hell of shit in. How about Rick doesn't, I mean, like everybody's seen the viral video of him saying like, I don't, I'm not formally trained in anything. I just have great taste. Oh, uh, where he said that? Yeah, like he doesn't have any like technical expertise. Like he doesn't play instruments or, mm -hmm. you know, he just kind of listens to music and he has like impeccable taste. Um, who do you think is somebody in the game that's got great taste for production, for the, you know, the features that they choose for the concepts of their albums. Maxo Cream. I was just I about agree. to say. No, I thing. agree. A lot like, of, I don't want to just go on regular production. Like, that's the main thing to my shit. Like, a lot of people, the beat carry them, but they can't rap. So the beat could carry them and it could be easy. I'm a rap hard, but I need the beat to carry too. Like, we both push it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So I'm very particular. I rap on shit that people wouldn't rap on, just like bang the bus, like that kind of beat with Evil Gianni. You know what I'm saying? That's what really got me back rapping. Yeah. I like rapping on weird shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Maxo type shit. Like, you know, just pushing myself. I don't like hearing the same shit. And a lot so. of people don't know he introduced a lot of people to to the game. Like, you were a big part of the Playboy Cardi game, game found, right? Hell yeah, hell yeah. And like, how did you know he was going to blow? Um, shit. Just now, I didn't. I was just <laughs> fucking with bro. Like, you know yeah. what I'm saying? I didn't. He was, bro, was just cool. We was just rocking. I had met him at, um, like the first Rolling Loud, like like right after Rolling Loud, off of um, Records had like a little um, festival. Yeah. So I had one over there. I met Cardi there. A few months later, it was um, South by Southwest. And this is back in the day when, when we were just whooping ass and yeah, shit. Yeah, that's what I heard, dude. I was whooping ass. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we don't get I don't know you why. You were like George Foreman. <laughs> Hell uh, yeah. South by Southwest. Because like we had some, some niggas that we was beefing with that was going to beat us. So yeah. we looking for them already. Then I brought all my niggas that be on that. So we just get into it with other random niggas. Yeah. We got into it with some Detroit niggas. Whooped them. We motherfucking <laughs> went to Thrasher or Fade of Ford or something. Whooped them. I whooped the biggest security. He kind of looked like you. He was bigger. <laughs> looked like Booker T. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He was whooping. I don't, I don't want to say who the fuck he was whooping, but we came for their help. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. yeah. And I seen the dude and I squared up with him. My heart, I had the biggest butterflies in my stomach. Fuck yeah, dude. But I'm just showing out and I swung and I hit his ass and he fell. And I jumped back in the crowd like, well, he ain't getting up. <laughs> and if he do get up, he, he ain't about to get on my ass, you feel me? We got to go. <laughs> so shit like that. And then like like in the middle of us fighting, and then they accord like, yo, Max, I'm fighting with you. Come on. And we was just whooping ass. He thugged with us that night. And from that night, we had went and shot the um Cell Boomin video. Okay. I don't know if y'all seen this one that got like Ben Staples, Lucky, Father, ASAP Rocky, yeah. Cardi. Like yeah. that was all that same day. So when you went to South by Southwest back in the day, like we originally for people listening, like Maxo was gonna link with us uh at South by. And then we were like, ah, it didn't work out, it's all good, we'll catch him down the line. And then he flew out to see us, fucking awesome. But 
sure. you know, like um I bet this is better anyways. Yeah, dude, this is fucking yeah. awesome. You know, I needed somebody somebody's ass to kick. So back in the days, I appreciate <laughs> back in the Boy, days, is that Ezra. something y'all always had marked on the calendar? Like, yo, South by the, Southwest. Yeah, like Hell like it was yeah. like a totally like you go now, you did like what tiny desk or something there? Did you? Did um, no, nah, I did Tiny Desk in Houston, but uh, but you did something in South by a couple years ago, maybe. Oh hell yeah, a couple yeah, yeah, years ago yeah. for sure. So like you go then and you're you're big time, like. But when you when you when you used to go, what was the point of going? Man, shit, I was passing my CD, spreading the word, like yeah. meeting a lot of people. Like yeah. a lot of people got onto my shit at South by because people used to go to listen to music, yeah, mm-hmm. to get on new music. Yeah. I always had crazy art cover. We always stood out. We was always fly as fuck. All black, a hundred deep. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Marvin through the streets, impact. But we pushing our music too. Yeah. And just like we out here, like bitch ass nigga. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Shit like that. But like my first time going to South by, I remember I seen like I was walking on Sixth Street. I seen like a Kendrick Schoolboy show, like 2011. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. And and like from South by, like from Austin back to Houston, we pulled over and we shot on um, my first music video called La La. Yeah. How cool yeah. is it that you pop? Like it seems like off that Kendrick cover. Like, you know, to be linked to Kendrick sure. in that way. Well, I mean, it was cool. Like, you know, like, shit, it was cool. You know what I'm saying? I got, like, a lot of a lot of recognition. A lot of people yeah. understood that I could rap. Yeah. That was my first. Like, I really taught myself how to rap. Like, when uh, we first started rapping, I was just the older um, older cousin, that older brother that, that sold weed. Right. You know what I'm saying? From, like, inside the clique was, like, the dope boy. So my little cousin really brought me into that shit, and I couldn't even, like, ice rap. Like, you say get him, you say got him. Old four air ones with the gum bottom, like mm-hmm. to now, nah, duh, 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 duh. like you know what I'm saying. So I had to teach myself. And when you taught yourself, like, let's say ten years ago, how different was your flow? Like fifteen, ten, you know, when you started out, how different was your flow? Um, shit. I was rapping shit. I was like, I'm in love with the la la. Call me Carmelo. Fire red Jordans like I'm walking with the devil. There's eagle and some crack rocks. Call it heavy metal. You did what I did like I rode it with a shovel. My bro moved pebbles. I ain't talking about Flintstones. The 40 o'clock and make it dip set like Jim Jones. Glocking my genetic. Connected to my hip bone. Me and Linda hit your bitch back to back ping pong. And we're bringing to your house like Dean Don't be on your chest to get you shot like King Kong. Bro, you remember all that. Hell yeah. <laughs> so if you. <laughs> it's fucking crazy, dude. So do you think <laughs> that's back when I used to write music? I wrote that. You wrote that. I wrote that shit in jail. What's the difference on that? Well, like you said back when I wrote music. Yeah. Like you don't write it anymore? Nah, it was like training wheels, bro. It was like, you know what I'm saying? I used to, I mean, it was hella lyrical and punchline jumpy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But shit, it was like, you know, it was like training wheels. Now nah, I just go in there and go off raw emotion. So like, do you, you think you, like you thought up that rhyme like today, like you would be rapping it in the same cadence? Or totally different. It was like your thought process now, like from like back then when you used to write. When you when you're punching in now in the studio. You talk about if I was rapping at this age in today age, or 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 if I was rapping at this age today. Yeah, I just feel like you switch your flow up sometimes. Like, yeah, I do. Like in a verse, like you'll just, which is fucking cool as shit. And I also right. think what's cool about like songs these days is like when we were growing up, the music we were all listening to, it was like hook verse, hook verse, hook verse. Right. And I think music is cool now in rap, like people will deconstruct songs and Kendrick does a great job of that. For you sure. know what I mean? Like, does that, is that more free? Is it more freeing now to be a rapper than it probably would have been in the nineties? Yeah. Cause I'm cause like now we're on rapping. You could use so much, like music is so much. It's, it's just a highlight. They put like the Euro step and like, you know what I'm saying? Search shit in the NBA if yeah. you go by the rule book. So like, it's just like a, a hook verse hook. I go bridge mm-hmm. hook mm-hmm. verse hook then bridge and then you can end the song like that because a yeah. bridge is like a refreshing hook that's still in the song that they forgot about mm-hmm. yeah you know what i'm saying you know you won't even know you're in the bridge mm-hmm. yeah dude uh yeah what about like writing now or not writing but like thinking shit up where do you have to be like what's the perfect scenario for you to actually like come up with some shit? i just stopped taking it so everything that you've been hearing been off adderall you know what i'm saying i just stopped taking that so all my new shit some of my some of my new shit is on Adderall, right? But like now, I just go smoke, smoke. I get hella high, like just super duper high, like to where I feel like I'm I'm out of space. I'm out of my body, and I'm just one with the music. Yeah. And then I just let it take me there. Yeah. So you were saying, um, you were writing. Were you writing before you got in jail, or was that something you started while like you were in jail? I wrote, but I didn't take it serious. I probably wrote like a couple songs. I wrote a song when I was 15, but I wasn't on shit for real. Right. But like when I went to jail, like I was like, like 19 turning into 20. Mm-hmm. That's when I was like, 
I had to because I got out and it was niggas inside our hood. They done dropped the music video. I'm like, you, you got me fucked up. So I like shit, yeah. So I just, just start comp- writing. Being competitive, you was like, you seen I'm them drop one. You was like, you was like, yo, we got to drop one. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. I'm very like everything I do competitive, like super competitive. So what? Why did you start taking Adderall? Was it to party? And then nah, I was making music, but it wasn't hitting. Like it was probably like right before I dropped Quick Strikes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Probably like 2014. I was dropping shit. It wasn't hitting, but I popped the Adderall. And I made some of the most crazy. I wrote it too. I made some of the most craziest shit. That's when I started making shit like I made Whitney Houston. I made Lewinsky. I made Lewinsky. Grannies. Yeah. I made motherfucking all Grannies. kind of shit. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. roaches. Yeah. I think, yeah, roaches like a motherfucker. So when you were writing those in the time and in the moment, like of those four songs you just like you named, when you're writing them and you're 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 recording them, are you saying in your head, like, yo, these are Bangers, like I know these are bangers, or are you? It's just a process. Like I'm banging these songs out. Let me get. I to the don't next be one. knowing. Like I put my all into it to go to the next one. It's kind of like lifting. Like you get yeah. stronger. You like yeah. man. Yeah. But you probably did the strongest or the best rep you ever did, yeah. but you don't know because you're going on to like the next one. Yeah. So it was like that. You know what I'm okay. saying? But now nah, roaches, I ain't right. I freestyled it. Okay. I started freestyling when um doing Fetty. Yeah. Once once me and Cardi made Fetty. Yep. Because was nobody else in there writing. And then like we got getting still, we got two hours. I'm like, man, they ain't got time for this shit. Yeah. Just giving the goddamn mic. We were playing Weighted World earlier when we were working out. By the way, Max was a beast in the fucking weight room. <laughs> Hell yeah. He's just a hoss, dude. <laughs> we were playing yeah. Weight of the World. <laughs> and you it depended on the song, I feel like, the way your ears perked up. Like, do you like some of your songs more? Like, what's your favorite song off that album? Then it's so goofy. Talk about what they gonna do to me. That was mm-hmm. the one. Me too. Yeah, yeah. FRFR. Yeah. Real, real. yeah. Big homie Crip like too. Yeah. Cause like, cause like I'm on that whole bouncing. Yeah. But it's a chill beat. So if you want to be chill, it's a cool you beat. can, but if you want to yeah. turn up, yeah. you can. I like that one. I like don't play with shorty ass. Um, I don't like 1159. <laughs> I like the one with me and Freddie. Yeah, the one with you and Freddie's great. Hell yeah. I like um on the deluxe, I like the one with me and Anderson Pac. Right. The vision. What else I like on there? I like Mama's Purse. Mama's Purse is great. I like I'm Worthless. Worthless. That's when I when yeah. I heard you talk about Adderall. Hell yeah. And honestly, what what like for me, I had just tried to get on the shit like last Word. fall because I have like ADHD and do like, vibe bands. Not, not that's what I heard. <laughs> I, no, I really I, do vibe bands. I just say Adderall so the world could get it. Hey. You say vibe bands. They don't be like, <laughs> How about you know the time I talk about medication the most is about is around rich successful motherfuckers. Because they all on them. I made a meal off them pills, man. <laughs> Multiple <laughs> meals off them pills. I don't know what it said. I but... sold them and I took them. Yeah. <laughs> but 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 you know, I tried it and I'll I'll never forget the first night I took it and I, I went home and smoked. And like I felt like a kid again. Like I just felt like my my mind was open. It was like limitless, right. the movie limitless. with Bradley Cooper. And and then fucking for it, and I was telling people like, "Yep, I'm good forever." And I'm talking about it was like ten milligrams. Right. <laughs> word. I, I took the I took the one that the blue one that <laughs> lasts like longer. The Vivans or the no, extended release? Adderall, extended Adderall, release. Adderall, the extended release. XRT. And I couldn't fucking sleep. Ten milligrams. So they put me on the IR, and I was like, "I'm never going back." A month in, bro, I start waking up in the morning just like a fucking rattlesnake, like mad at shit, just cussing shit out in the house, like inanimate objects, yeah, you do. like cussing my clothes out. I'm like, man, there's something wrong here. And right. for me, it just, I feel like the come down off Adderall was too much. And I, so I quit, but I do miss the being locked in. I think creatively, like getting ready for this show, like thinking up funny shit to do, questions to ask you, I wish I was on something. So maybe it's Vivance. Facts. I mean, for, for making music, I love it. Cause like shit, there's a college campus around. They shit. A lot of people graduated off the motherfuckers. So yeah. mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Nigga, I made music off the motherfuckers. But I took it one time, Rolling Loud, LA 2017. It was my best performance. That's when right. I that's when I invented the, the turnaround spin kick. I rocked the fuck out that motherfucker <laughs> off the Adderall. I was doing too much. I had brought a bitch with me that I was being cool with. But when I popped the Adderall, I'm tucking her down on side of the stage. Yeah. I'm doing all kind of shit. Yeah. Out of character. Rappers, yeah, rappers that I had never talked to. I seen them. Social. What up, nigga? What up? I see you, <laughs> Let's work. Yeah. Then I woke up the next morning. Dude, he's texting me. Dude, <laughs> like, the fuck? I'm friendly. <laughs> fuck these at all. But yeah. Do you do, cool. do ra- are rappers friendly with each other, or, or is there like a like? Is 
I feel like there's a lot of alpha. Man, I got a lot of respect. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like, like really like the rap shit is like 20% music, 80% other shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But that my 20% of the music, it have artists like you see how I mean Tyler Met is really be like the music. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like shit, like everything I do really be like the music. I don't got no antics. I don't got no going viral ass shit. Yeah. I just drop my shit and put on these clothes and if yeah. you like it, shit, fuck with me. The 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 rap beefs, man, like I feel like we were talking about this last night a little bit, just right, the way right, people right. resolve conflict and shit. And and people don't want to talk things out like like men sometimes. But like fucking it feels like right now to be a rapper, it's the most dangerous time ever because of all the inputs for conflict. For you know sure. what I mean? For sure. Like there's the internet, there's fucking blogs, everybody's got a podcast. Like in the nineties, I feel like You'd have to like be around somebody or Wait mention for the somebody on the song right. or be in an interview in the source. Like now I feel like something can pop off like that. For sure. I mean, I be watching like these hip hop documentaries. Everybody had beef. It showed a Nas hole. Yeah. Nas fucking Ja Rule. I'm like, what the fuck they beef shit like that? So yeah. they had beef, but it's just more broadcasted now. Yeah. And even in the nineties, bro, what Tupac Biggie. Yeah. Nigga, what the fuck? Ice Cube and NWA. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that shit, it just come with the um sport, but you got more street niggas getting on. Cause back in the day, a lot of them rappers wasn't street niggas. Now you can actually go and look at our documentaries, look at our past and shit, and you can see that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's way more real gangster street niggas rapping, real drug dealer trappers now than ever. And there's more rappers. Cause, than ever. Cause you can become a rapper by right, right. you know pushing your shit. Or I feel whatever. like TikTok did that though. Like before TikTok, it was really about goddamn. Cause now you, we get so many head ass rappers. Yeah. yeah, it be some head ass rappers, bro. <laughs> because of TikTok, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Shit like that. So. You make money off TikTok? Have I don't think I have. Okay. I don't know how to use that motherfucker. Like, nah, <laughs> I'm lying. TikTok just ain't for me. Like, I be on that motherfucker. Though. Not for me. Either. Yeah. Hey, TikTok, I love y'all though. Y'all wanna get it back? You're already. Up, like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Let's do it, man. You know, I seen Soldier Boy make that money. I ain't a fool. Now I'm all for it. I get on there. But you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like, I ain't come up like. On TikTok. Wait, well, talking about how you came up, what'd you listen to? Shit, everything. My playlist would go from Nas, Papoos. We were talking about Papoos earlier. Yeah, you know, yeah. To Lil B. Yeah. To the cool kids. Yeah. <laughs> to like motherfucking goddamn shit, Dipset. Hell of Lil Wayne. Yeah. OD'd on Lil Wayne. Like, that's why I rap. He said last night, can I tell him which Carter you thought was the best? <laughs> Yeah. Carter three. Carter three. You agree? I think so. Wow. I don't know. It's just like fucking hard to pick one, man. I could make an argument for all of them. Wayne had a lot of. But like, see, people only be going like, then. you gotta look. I say, mm, the block is hot, 500 degrees, Carter three. Damn. You know, I'm, a, I'm from the south. Like, we grew up on yeah. Hot Boys. Yeah, yeah. So we been new who Lil Wayne. Yeah, it's so, like different. Yeah, so yeah. yeah. Yeah, hell yeah. Yeah. And our the Black is Hot was crazy, was a crazy, like, for the times in the 90s showing, like, cause LA showed you the game banking. Right. East Coast showed you everything. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, but like that down south, like, bro, like, whenever you see niggas down south with 100 guns outside in front of our apartments and shit, yeah. that's just the hot boys, bro. Back in the mm-hmm. day, juvenile hot, you know what I'm saying? Video type shit. Like, oh, yeah. They have movies. So you, like, real, like, down south, exactly. The movies. You remember the Hell, movies? Yeah, they got bottle blocking. Houston got Dirty Third, shit like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're my cousins for real, like Louisiana, right there. Like Lloyd, the one that you whoop. Yeah, you know, son from New Orleans, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. So, I used yeah. to listen to 504 Boys back in uh-huh. the day. Uh huh. Yeah. Bill we be Master P. I was just listening to Young Bleed. You remember Young Bleed? Yeah, I'm a little like old. He was, he was back in the No Limit days when Snoop was with No Limit. Okay, for sure. Have you yeah. met Snoop yet? I ain't never met Snoop, but shout out Snoop. He had um, DM me one time. He had like a comedy show or something. Yeah. He just DM me like, yo, man, you know, if you got your mama, your aunties, anybody want to come by the show, Dude. I got tickets. Ooh, ooh. I like for sure. Then I like, Snoop, you slick motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> but if you going to talk to anybody, talk to my mama. Yeah. Nah, I'll play. I'll play. He's cool, bro. But shit, you know, he rich. You know what I'm saying? He yeah. doing things successful. You know, real crip. Like, he, that's a Martha Stewart crip. I want to be able to be 50 years old, mm-hmm. yeah. popping this crip shit on Martha that's, Stewart. That's what I was going to ask you is like- Type for- shit, like, you know. For, for being a crip and seeing someone like Snoop and seeing how marketable and commercial like he is and making a bag in different areas, is that something that like is like the ultimate goal? For sure. That's why I'm on this podcast working out, <laughs> hog hunting, playing yeah, golf, man. showing my personality. People don't know that I'm really fun. I'm funny as fuck. Yes, you are. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They don't really know. Yes, you are, dude. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm Charleston White funny. 
That's that funny. motherfucker's funny, dude. Chris, he find in the bitch. Hey, I send you shit from him all the time. <laughs> Yo, I'm like, really? I can't retweet this shit, but God, Charleston White and Funny Marco. That's Chris Funny is, Marco that's Chris is, is the funny. You know who Funny Marco is? Hell yeah. Yeah. Funny Marco is. Yeah. He he the one that always look at you stupid. Mm -hmm. You have to yell. Mm -hmm. I met him at the <laughs> Super Bowl. <laughs> Um, sure. I gave him five hundred dollars at the casino, and he didn't turn down. He was like, "Yeah, I'll take it." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Jesus Christ, you're supposed to say no." I got my own money. I got a fucking no hell no. I told give us the athletes' yeah, money, but, right? <laughs> I told we Chris if he ever if he offers any black person free money, <laughs> they're never gonna okay, turn it yeah, down. Yeah, brothers' reparations. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, listen, oh, <laughs> over square. Okay. <laughs> um, no, I mean like. When it comes to meeting older guy, older rappers like Snoop Oz. or I don't know if you met Cube or I mean Ice Cube yet, um, but like, have you met a lot of the the older guys you grew up listening to? Have you met like Scarface and Hell yeah, I met yeah. Scarface. Scarface funny as shit. Scarface, Hove, yeah, Nas. I met Nas at Hitboy Studio. Yeah. Um, have I met I met Chameleon before? I tried to introduce myself. He like nigga, I know who you is, Max O'Crane. <laughs> That's, That's cool as fuck. I'm like, damn. That's cool. Yeah, that's you know, cool. um, he a legend. Who the fuck? I meet Pat Poose yet? Vocal Pat Poose. Um, but I don't just be getting starstruck over no goddamn artists like that. Yeah, probably like an athlete. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. What I'm saying? Shout out my boy Steve Francis. Who who would oh, you be the most starstruck? Me. All right, Kobe. Kobe. Yeah. Probably like Rest LeBron because I hate on LeBron so much. Yeah, and I and I I only and had on be LeBron worried. because he, look look though I only had on yeah. LeBron like LeBron was my favorite rookie player of all time. I love LeBron, yeah. I'm not. But my little brother used to whoop my ass so bad with Mo Williams <laughs> and LeBron. Mm -hmm. You know, like that two K shit makes you talk to all the people that you might fuck with. <laughs> so I'm like, fuck LeBron, slow <laughs> flat foot ass nigga. He can't do, do nothing without a pick and roll. Kobe, I saw everything and make a heart. Kobe would do everything in the world and make sure yeah. this is a three point line and stand right here yep. and make the most uncomfortable two pointer on earth. It was just exciting to watch. LeBron, <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, shit like that. But I I love LeBron. Can I, ain't nobody fucking with that nigga. Like, you know what I'm saying right now? Yeah. He a legend. I don't, you, you, I don't see him slowing down. I, I see LeBron being another nigga that got the best Carter Jerry Rice long ass career. Like, we ain't going nowhere. I don't know, though, because I feel like he wants to get Bronny in the league, play with him, and then get out. Like, I think he's. he's yeah, but shit, nigga LeBron, look, if LeBron start getting too good, Burn gonna bust his ass. Son, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> we here. You know what I'm saying? That's what I feel. Nigga, yeah. if I had a son, he comes to the league, like, yeah, it's cool, you play with me. Now, if you disobey your dad and do all this shit, I'm gonna bust your ass. <laughs> I'm gonna make you hurry. By the time I retire, maybe you can come do what I'm doing. That's fucking awesome. If it, uh, have you heard any athletes rap that you think can rap, can actually rap? No. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> Shaq did decent on that um, song yeah. Zero. Yeah. Okay. Um, JaVale McGee sent me some shit. I got to go listen to it again. He sent it to me back in the day. See, you don't want to get in trouble with JaVale McGee. That's it. fucking, I told him a story last night, which people on this podcast have heard before, where I, I extended a dap yeah. toward, at the Leopard. Supper Club in LA, dude. I was fucking yeah. wasted. I was white guy wasted walking through the club. I said, holy shit, JaVale McGee. It's the guy I play 2K with. I get buckets with this guy. I'm going to dap him up. I go to dap him up, and he just walks right past, right over me. He yeah. like, you know, just looks at the top of my head. For so, real? Yeah. Hey, like, ja hey, ja hey, JaVale, that's fucked up, my nigga. You don't see, see people see? like that, my nigga. <laughs> and then I heard this last night. This my nigga Chris, voice. my nigga. Yeah, exactly, dude. <laughs> we work out here at Bench Press, nigga. Exactly. You don't do that to my partner, to my workout partner. Exactly, bro. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, you know, Dame is pretty good, Lily. Yeah, hell yeah, yeah. D dot Cole. As a matter of fact, he need to send me some. KD got some shit too. Oh, yeah, I heard don't play KD. with KD. Oh yeah, KD. This shit Kevin like Durant. Yeah, Disney. man. And Shumpert. I thought Shumpert was pretty. Hey, now nah, his shit was cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah, his shit was cool. Yeah, but ain't nobody fucking with Iverson. Yeah, and Jada Kiss. And that one Reebok commercial oh, back in the day. Ah, that yeah, was yeah. the best. That yeah. was the best commercial. And like yeah. best NBA production, it got to be. Jason Williams with the doom, mm -hmm. <laughs> doom, 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 mm -hmm. doom. Remember, oh, yeah. like the whole little Nike mm -hmm. shit. Hell yeah, that was a that was a crazy era. You, you mentioned zero, Jada just, and AI. Go just get thinking about five. Houston rap, like uh, it's funny because growing up, I didn't listen to a ton of Houston rap. Like as like a teenager, I was on the New York rap, and then you know what album it was that got me into it was Mike Jones, which is fucking crazy to say. How important is that album? Is that album important? I fuck with it. But I was more like I was I jammed all they mixtapes more than they album. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like shit, like that's why I'm like, who? Maxo. Yeah. So like I repeat a lot of shit. Yeah. Or like that's how my bridges come. Like, you know how he just repeat like like a couple of phrases? 
I bring a whole four bars back that, that yeah. I thought was catchy that wasn't the hook, yeah. but could be the semi hook. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I bring that back. Now, I guess there's like some repetitive Mike Jones. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Well, he had the he was saying he reminded me, everybody knew his phone number, the whole country. Yeah. And I just think what what was to me was like a lot of white kids got into Houston rap because of Mike Jones, which is funny as shit. Right. Like, you know what I mean? That album for real, I I played it for like two years. It was amazing. Um, but like if if let's say somebody's never heard Houston rap and you have like an afternoon with them, what are you gonna play them? Mm, old school or new school? See, you can mix, you can mix it up. Got a I'm couple a, hours. I, I'm going to play them um, June 27th. You know what I'm saying? Some big mo, take them through the pokey. Take them through some Hulk. Take them through some Maxo for sure. Yes. I'm going to take them to old school Zero on Trey. Yep. That's when they was rapping. Them, them niggas, I, they had to be on Adderall or something. They was rapping they ass off. Yeah. Like that when I go back to that shit and hear them niggas back to back on the same shit. Yeah. Zero on Trey is the number one duo to come out of Houston. You know, Trey got black ball. Trey got some shit too. He got shit with Lil Wayne. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All kind of shit. You know what I'm saying? I take him through that just to like, you know, like some history foundation. What's going on now? I play me again. I play some Don Tolliver. I put a little bit of sauce walk in there. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I, I um, you know, just like I'm trying to get the real Houston. Like yeah. what's going on? Throw some little Jeremy. What else we got going on? KCG, Josh Cream, click yeah. the whole persona shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Cartel bow. You know what I'm saying? For ghetto, sure. Like ghetto gospel, that's when that shit sauce so walk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll fuck with that. Hell so yeah. how about this? Um chop chopped and screwed. Ex explain chopped and screwed for someone who's not from Houston and or from Texas. And how do you feel about that? Yeah, I never heard chopped and screw or screw ain't do it. If yeah. that screw ain't do it, they ain't real chopped and screw. Everything else been Man, I mean, no, some of the DJs probably know how to do it, like Michael Watts, niggas that's around that time get the real screw. Yeah. But they don't like. But what what um what technically makes it like chop or screw? How do they what, do it? They like, slow it down. Slow it down, but like. Yeah, they uh, slow it down, but you gotta be off the lean, preferably the activist or the Al Farmer to really know that real lean, like that real, like it's a certain slur to it. I be doing it on my songs, you know. So what you I'm have saying? you have to be on lean to really feel to be on the tempo of the, of what you're trying to create. I mean, what? no, because you know you got all kind of programs now, but yeah. to get the real tempo, that yeah. real feel, you gotta be off that juice. You gotta be feeling it, like the engineer sip in Houston. <laughs> You can have a real productive ass engineer that's simply lean. Yeah. <laughs> For real. So, yeah. What, yeah. what goes into a lean habit financially and fucking from like a lifestyle standpoint? What does it actually do to you? Like while you're on lean, are you like, hey, I'm I'm slipping up in this area? So shit, you got like, I, I always sit purple lean. I always been like the purple lean connoisseur yeah. and red lean because that's considered purple lean, like the top shelf shit. So I would like shit. Back when I was sitting in act, I used to sell act. I used to get pints for like, 350 to 600. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then selling 50 a line, 60 a line, shit like that. So I was selling that, so that shit wasn't that bad. But when I stopped, like lean went up to like 100 a line. Yeah. So shit. And how many lines in a bottle? Like 16. So they'd be okay. 1,600. But then when I stopped, stopped, I was buying pints of like 25 to 3,000. Right now, I pint 6,000. For me, because like if I'm really sipping like that, I'm a cup. No, not 6,000. I'm hiding 5,000. Pints five, but there's some niggas that be like, man, look, nigga, I need that pint, nigga. I'm gonna come here to see. I'm gonna pay the house. You can tax me. I need that. Yeah. Hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? But it go with everything. You got your chrome heart on. You got yeah. your lean. You got, but yeah, that shit expensive than the motherfucker. That's why I stopped. I used to buy two pints a week at three thousand. So that was six, like, six I, like I'm times four please. times twelve. I was angry than the motherfucker, fat as hell. Really? It makes you. I always been a big nigga, but I know when I'm fast sloppy when I'm persona max so fat. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, nah, was it like fast sloppy because you just wasn't working out? You just wasn't doing I ain't, nothing. Man, I ain't start working just... out. I ain't start working out till last year. Really? Hell yeah! I just what all... made you start? My daughter. Word. Well, yeah, a lean habit. That shit expensive, bro. Or you sip green lean. What's green lean? That's the shit that I ain't gonna say the broke niggas sip. It's like the, what the hood. That's Reggie. Sip. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but that shit, but it, it knocked you out though. That shit's stronger than Probably more green. expensive than Reggie though. Who? Not really, bro. You get a pint of green lean for $80. No shit. If some, you can upcharge in Houston, me. But if, shit, I ever, if I ever get in the lean, But shit, upcharge you take me. that shit to Cali, yeah. Chicago, she used to that shit 30 a line, like 25 a line. It's 80 a, a pint to do the math. It's 16 lines at 30. Can you can you go on stage high or on lean? Hell yeah. Yeah? <laughs> Hell yeah. I saw Civil Lean, but 
I sip on certain occasions, like my daddy death day, my brother death day, something like yeah. that. Cause we from Texas, it's like Texas tea, you doing a toast. Yeah. Like, should I come sit with you? I don't get addicted. Yeah. Like, I don't need, like, I don't got no lean with me. I got weed for sure. Right. So I don't get addicted. So I sipped not too long ago, went to Texas Tech. And I performed. I was on stage, jump as these, and they're like, "How the hell this nigga do all this shit?" <laughs> and just sip that, like for sure. It does it fuck it. All right, here's a dumb question, but does it fuck the grill up? The grill, like, does it stay in the grill? Dude, I mean, you gotta go get. That's a tough food. combination. Eating really food, eating grills and lean. Nah, I don't, I don't stain it. Okay, I feel like shit eating food will stain yeah, it more. Really? So Chris, think about getting one. I'm thinking about getting one. Come to Houston, bro. I really? Go get one. So who's the jeweler? Like, do you get all For your a grill? You gotta go to Johnny Dane because okay. his shit feel like a glove. You feel me? Yeah. You want the, you don't want no baggy ass, hard ass, big bulky. Like you ever see nigga they got a grill and they like <laughs> can't like can't can't just, close their mouth. You know what I want? I, like, I, like look, this is a pull out. Like man. bad veneers, permanent. like bad veneers. Like look, this look permanent. Yeah, yeah. But pull out. Oh, you can pull it right out. Pause. Yeah. Jeez. Okay. <laughs> he hey, um, but but like uh you go to one jeweler for all this stuff? Hell no, nah, I can walk through it. This ice man Nick, you need to fix my fucking chain. <laughs> okay. I, 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 I owe you money. But fix my chain and we can figure it out, nigga. But yeah, yeah. shout out Ice Man Nick. I spent so much about the whole crew chain and shit over there. This had my brother picture on it, but it came out because my fat ass be sweating. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Diamonds yeah. on the back, triple stack. Then got the inward cuts in the front. You know what I'm saying? If I say cream click, but the click fell off. But guess what? I'm such a real nigga. I'm a key rocking this shit. Should I it, get it fixed? Is it bad form to ask me if that's like a, like a Range Rover or like a Kia or probably um if it's, even if it's a fucking Kia? Like a Lambo. Damn, Lambo truck like a years. A Euros, Jesus, he's yeah. got a Euros on his neck. I don't tell you how much I paid. No, I'm not gonna. I don't never. So the price I tell you, I don't never pay this shit. I don't care what you get mad. Right. I, I'm gonna tell you <laughs> how much they told me to say shit cost. Oh, okay. So shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's pendant. You probably get like 70, 70 k on the pendant. I understand why there's Cuban leak. You probably get it for like sixty. I understand no, why I'm there's saying. a whole industry for so, so. robbing people. So, like, I got. Like I totally get the the reason yeah, to rob, but people. no, but custom jewelry you can't buy like you can't sell us like that. Cause somebody gonna yeah. want you don't want your name. Yeah, you don't want your. You gotta melt it down. So yeah, so like right, so you I'm, can't be walking yeah, around yeah, with so something like that. Can. So all together is like one hundred thirty. Golly. Yeah, let me see. So I got this from Ice Man Nick. I got this from Johnny Dane. Excuse me, shit metal. I ain't wear everything either. I see that. I uh, get stupid. Now. I'm grown. I'm, I'm buying real estate and <laughs> shit. I'm like, yeah. what the fuck? Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. This is the infamous persona pendant done by Icebox. Private said, they mean that they end up fighting like the diamonds end up fighting. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They tax the shit out of me. <laughs> they tax the fuck out of me, probably like 50. Okay. I'm cap as hell. Let me see. That's an F-150 no, no, base no, model. No, F-150. Like yeah. Oh, yeah. Something like that. Is the, and is that something that like- And this Cuban right here. We got the baguettes in it, my fault. You know, I love talking about my jewelry. No, this is cool. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm saying, no, I, you gotta see, I don't get to look at stuff like this a lot. <laughs> This is probably like not a big jewelry chat. This is probably um, like seven hundred grams on this Cuban. Jeez, this one probably like five hundred. Know what I'm saying? With the um, what you mean? They're not not emerald, but what's the other baguettes? See, I can't trust myself with that something that expensive. Yeah, because sure. I'm gonna lose it. Yeah. I had a Breitling. I lost it. It wasn't yeah. like that. Yeah, my but, boy Jimmy boy. Yeah, Jimmy boy with the handicap crippling. Yeah, that's dope. You know what I'm saying? That's super cool. With the baguettes bust all the way down. You know what I'm saying? With the little boy Cuban. Look cool. Yeah. yeah cool yeah. Cuban on it. Yeah. I'm going to say this price is because it was kind of like, it wasn't a gift, but it was like a gift. Then I got my watch, two tone AP. This the, And this factory too with it. Like, niggas be thinking, like, you know what I'm saying? I can still resell this, get my, because it, because like, there's no prongs. Yeah. And it's real two tone. You can see it from the inside, the real oak. A lot of people get like the stainless ones and just get an airbrush. It's not that. I wouldn't do that. Everything, like, ain't none of these diamonds poking out. Everything ain't flat on the watch. God. Flat reset. You know what I'm saying? I paid 54K for when I first got it. It's going for like 109. Then it's a Super Bowl ring. I know. That was yep. dope. This is the first thing I was like, man, I should have brought mine in, but <laughs> mine's not worth as much as that thing. I can tell you that much. Have you ever been sold anything fake and found out later? Hell no. I've been sold motherfucking. <laughs> <laughs> Ties by. 
Okay. 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 Some of them fake though, but yeah. shit, they play with the um diamonds. I had okay. SIs in that motherfucker. They yeah. It was VBSs. It like it like VS twos and shit. So I had to go really go get the um specs on all my jewelry and shit. And they redid it for me. Shout out to them. It wasn't their fault. Somebody made a mistake in that motherfucker. Yeah. They redid it for me. Um. Yeah. Then like they then like they put me on checking all the rest of the jewelers. Yeah. yeah. Like, I really built that relationship with them like through trial and error and shit like that. Then like they was in there like I used to have rope chains. Yeah. Before everybody know like you got a Cuban. You know how it is to convert from a Cuban to a rope. These Cubans ain't cheap. Yeah. Not bad. Fuck. They ain't cheap, bro. So through the whole conversion time and shit like that, like I got episodes on the Icebox channel of me updating my jury, getting my jury up to like where it is today. You feel me? Is that's that it. something like for you as a rapper? Did you feel like you had to go buy jewelry from Icebox? Man, and everyone? nah. Cause when I first started, I was just like in so like Supreme pieces, gold yard pieces, yeah. Kelly Rest Supreme. Like I was more on that shit with like a gold grill. Yeah. yeah. But then like I was like, shit, I'm getting this money and I might as well pop it. I'm from Texas. Right. Like you know what I'm saying? Like the diamond capital. Yeah. You feel me? Like shit. So. I just got into it, but I don't buy jewelry no more. I could have been with Big Man. Hell no. Yeah. Like, I'm more into buying cars and like, you know what I'm saying, buying property. What you know what, what, what kind of car? I've heard you talk about a matte black rover. Yeah. But... So yeah, the matte black rover, that's the one from the Fetty video. That's the one I bought off of, like weed. Yeah. Mm. So it meant a lot to me. Yeah. Um, I got the matte black Lambo now. Stepped it up. Yeah, yeah. I had the um black S550, but Got rid of that one. Got a newer Ed, uh, white S five fifty. Got rid of that and got the lamb truck. You seem like a truck guy though, and I know you're in the luxury trucks, but I, I could see you yeah, driving yeah. a pickup truck too. Yeah, yeah, I got one coming. I got TRX coming soon, but I got the lamb truck. I got the track hawk. Yeah. Then I got a, a, a white bench for my baby mama. Yeah. Bought my mama a car. I bought her two cars. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But one fucked up. <laughs> that's so, that's how cars do. I bought my little sister a car. <laughs> I gave my mama my my Mad Black Rover too. Yeah, but it, but it flooded during like um Hurricane Harvey. Oh shit. Yeah, with all the hurricanes down there, man. Like I know Katrina was crazy because people came from everywhere. Like, like this motherfucker, right? Yeah, here. I know, I know. Yeah, but like, what what changed in the city? And then like for you, where you were at that point in your life, like what changed? Man, so like I feel like I was a bad kid. Yeah, I was stuck and I was crippling and shit. But when Katrina hit, that's when I got gangster. Yeah. I was thugging with them. You know what I'm saying? That's when I got introduced to like crack cocaine and shit, like selling and shit like that. Like, you know what I'm saying? I did with the devil and that shit, but it, that was never really me. Right. I was more weed. Yeah. I ain't like, I done sold everything. Like, Sherm sticks, all that shit. I don't like the fiends. I don't like how they come. Have you ever rather... smoked a Sherm stick by accident? Haha, <laughs> you funny as shit. I'm just wondering. <laughs> I never smoked a Sherm <laughs> stick, but I had bought some weed for some niggas at TSU and I thought it was Dallas Corn. And it was really Sherm, and then we so found. Explain, what does that explain, feel like? Explain what Sherm is first. Sherm is water. Angel dust, right? Yeah, PCP yeah, angel dust. Yeah. I think angel dust might be actual dust, or they might call it that, but I yeah. ain't see angel dust. <laughs> I see motherfucking water, <laughs> Sherm, yeah. gallons of that shit. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, you know, it's what's it? What's it feel like? It's like, man, I didn't even know I was on it. I had smoked with some chick, and she ended up going to the hospital and was like. Oh, you put me on fucking. I'm like, bitch, no the fuck I didn't. I'm yeah, I'm on. And then it. like shit, we went to a party and the niggas that I bought it from, they bought us some Sherm sticks. We ended up fighting them niggas, splashing them out. And then I called the girl, like, yeah, be careful buying from these weird ass niggas. As a matter of fact, just get just get all your weed for me. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Shit like that. So <laughs> when it when it became when it changed from weed to like coke or whatever, what like how hard was it to learn to actually cook? Easy, my brother is a fucking chef. Shout out Janky Jew. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, like he a real, I, I call him the fryer. You know yeah. what I'm saying? He could really get down. <laughs> me, they, like, you know what I'm saying? He showed me and shit, but it wasn't just like, you know, I'm like, let me sell this weed. Yeah. Or like, or like I hold his shit. Yeah. Or like hit, like hit his place. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But for me, it was more like the weed and shit. I got a song on my day on the Tyler B called Crack at 15. Like, I was selling Crack at 15. Riding Honda Civic that I rented for the things I had a Glock before, chopped and bought an AR-15. Trap or die the Carter three, bathed in AB beads with jeans. Mm -hmm. Shit like that. That so. lines up fashion-wise, too. Hell yeah. yeah. Like, that's how I dress to this day. Like yeah. Letterman's, yeah. Ibizu's. Yeah. You know, the only thing that might change is like Chrome Heart. Yeah. I throw a lot of Chrome, or my brand Persona. Yeah. I mix my brand with all that shit. We had a bunch of, I had a bunch of LR. Why brand. the hell we ain't bringing no Persona? Yeah. What's up with that? You gotta Jeez. get some. Y'all gonna look. I came out here, bro. Yeah. 
Yeah, we're coming. coming. Yeah, we're coming. Yes. Bro, fuck yeah. Hey. Do a podcast and I can bring my friends. Yes. Yeah. I'm going to try to bring Mexican OT. Yes, dude. Yes. Bring him. Let's we got, do it. And we're going to we're gonna do shit outside there, too. But like. Uh, Wings in a strip club. Bro. Let's talk Houston sports, man. Because <laughs> like I saw you got painted up and you were at a Texans game. Seems like a good time to be a Texans fan. Oh, yeah. Mexican how, OT. How are we feeling about the Texans, man? <laughs> I love them. Shout out, Dig. Are you FaceTiming this motherfucker? Yeah. Hopefully he pick up. I was yeah, well, that, he used to always pick up. He better not do this on, to me on the fucking podcast, dude. Whenever I do it, it's, yeah, I get stood up all the time. He's gonna hit you. It's back. earlier. It's lit. I mean, ah, fat bitch, dude. This guy, hey, that guy, the, the way he rolls his R's on the song is fucking right, crazy, right, right, dude. Right, 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 right. Like he's got the most unique, like kind of like I don't know who he reminds me of. Anybody? That's the cool thing about him, man. He he himself, but the way he rolled them, he. Bro, every R he do, he really rolling. I'm like, well, I'm like, holy cause, shit! Cause we took the song and it mixed and mastered. I don't know how long this bitch rolling this R. Yes, <laughs> ain't shit changed on the south side. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's cool as shit. And then the other guy was telling me the Spanish I, alphabet got the double R's. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, fucking the reason I know Maxo is because Nate put me onto him. I don't like listen to rap actively anymore. When somebody right, puts right. me onto something I like, I can't get enough of it. But I'm not out looking for it. And the, the two weeks ago, my brother Kyle put me on to uh, Big X, the plug. And I think he's fucking. Hey, you know good. that Big X bought me this for my birthday? Which, what did he buy you? This Chrome Heart. Hey, shout oh, out no to Big shit. X. The hat, love, really? Shirt, yeah. I bought the pants. I was in Chrome Heart, seen the pants. I got to grab them. Yeah. Yeah, man. Shout out my nigga Big X, the plug, man. Dude. That guy's amazing. That's my brother, man. That song, so, I love that song, Levels. That's the one I yeah, play the most. Really been popping my shit on a whole nother thing. Yeah, you dude. You gets into the devil. That's a hard Lord. fucking song, dude. Um, all right, well, how about how about the Texans? Let's talk about the Texans, man. What's the expectation in 2000? We're going to the Super Bowl. I said it when, like, I've been a Texas fan, you know what I'm saying? But I said, I've been said, I was like, bro. We going to the playoffs this year for sure. Yeah. CJ Stroud, he was in his bag. You know what I'm saying? That's a little bro. Shout out him. You know what I'm saying? He was in his bag, going crazy. I'm at all the games. Every game I went to, we won. Yeah. yeah. I ain't say I'm the lucky charm, but I'm there. You better get. You know what I'm saying? I'm there. I'm painting the face. I'm. I was supposed to do tailgating, but he woke me up late. Oh, Lord, because he was on Madden losing. It probably until two in the gotta, morning. Gotta, yeah. Gotta, he was on Madden tail. probably until two in the morning. Uh, <laughs> fucking, uh, were you at that Tampa game where they like won in the last minute? Did you get on Was we there? The Tampa game? It was like 59-57, dude. Oh, CJ, no, he had under a minute to go. That's what we'll do. Let, let's, we're let's we're going to a Texans game. Let's go we're, to a Texans we're gonna, game. We're gonna, we're gonna, I got, yeah, dudes there. We're it's hoping to get it. CJ on soon. Hell yeah. Um, let's I'm, tailgate. I like to eat. Let's no, tailgate, yeah, Let's dude. definitely tailgate. Let's fucking let's get tailgate. the whole experience. Yes. Hell See, yeah. my life is so boring. <laughs> dude, ours, ours yeah. too. Right? It's like right. a fucking suburban dad. Hey, if I got to go to Houston for work, It'll be a good time. We'll take Nate down with me. And we're going to the strip club. Yeah, Hell so yeah. talk to me about the Houston strip clubs. Area 29, man. That's my home base. Like, you know how um Future said, Magic City, I'm the owner. Yeah. I own Area 29, man. <laughs> hey. me, me me and DJ Eric for real. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Shout out to Team Chris, man. Like, that's the club showed me the most love, bro. Yeah. I just love it. The way you light up when I go to strip clubs is awesome. Man, because Air 29 is the club, bro. DJ Eric, that's <laughs> the like the way nigga. you lit up. Like, what is it about strip clubs? I mean, besides the obvious. I don't give a fuck about strip clubs. The food be cool. The but food. At Air 29, like Eric, that's my like anything going on in the city, he let me know. He'd be like, yo, Drake having some private shit. He wants you to come. Yeah. Pull up. Like, I've been at the Drake shows, all that shit. It's been like, Everybody, yeah. Twenty dollar hookahs, two hundred dollar box. Oh no, That's nigga, them hookahs be fifty. Oh, they be fifty. To yeah, hookah ain't got nothing to do with the club. I, I, yeah, I'm buying a hookah. <laughs> I'm buying a hookah like a motherfucker. You feel me? What's some conversation cost there? I'm just talking about conversation. <laughs> Shit, free, free. <laughs> but then they gonna ask you, you get in the band? Yeah. But like, duh, like it ain't like no like titty bar like Yellow Rose. Where you go, they sit in your lap. Man, niggas coming out with them bands, yeah. throwing money. Yeah, you gonna look them yeah. like. Holy fuck, my wife's gonna kill me. Let yeah. me get 10K. Chris <laughs> Long, you know how I'm burn, burn, burn. Okay. So Got the, the, the sparklers come out. I'm it's fucked. Coming out. Let me ask I'm you fucked, this. dude. Let me ask you this. No, I got one. You, too, you, bro. You're not necessarily broke, but you a dude, you right. got you got two hundred dollars in your pocket. How you freaking it at the strip club? Alright, I'm gonna tell you what I do. If I only got two hundred dollars and I'm at the strip club, 
I'm gonna have my shiesty mask on. <laughs> I'm gonna be in there. I'm gonna have Lord like how much he threw in there. Where he, that's Chris Long. Where he from? He from 30K. <laughs> you follow me. Let him come out. That, that, if I ain't know you, I'm just saying. No, no, I ain't fucking. I'm hey, like, bitch. Don't take you know it. Don't take it. I would find. Hey, they gonna come out the back door. I'm gonna up on your ass. Hey, listen. You better not move because we gonna get the air in this hole because I only got two hundred dollars. Hey, speaking of our trip to Houston, do we get security at this fucking nightclub? Because now, hell yeah, security. I, come to think of it, I look like food. Yeah. You know? Hey, bro, you don't need security. Man, you with me? Yeah, yeah. dude. Everybody gonna play with us. They gonna play dead, but they play with us. Man. I love that. Bro. I love, they I love like, that. They like not only that, not even on some tough shit. It's on bits and neck. Yeah. My hood right there. So yeah. let anybody play. I'm a friendly motherfucker. I, I like good. To, I like to keep it moving. You get in front of my hood. It's not like that. You're gonna be, they gonna love you, bro. Yeah, Tommy dude. G been there. Yeah, he oh, really? Hell Fuck yeah. Man. I did the whole Tommy G shit. What would you do? What okay, give me a tip for somebody that might want a stripper to go away. Uh, maybe the stripper's a little bit. Don't give her a band. It'd be like, get out of my section. But like, you know how they sit down and they're like, hey, be like, what's bitch, you did you hear me? <laughs> <laughs> you know hey, come get her. <laughs> That's how a lot of people get in trouble. Just, yeah, Matt wants to be asked about James Harden. He's a big NBA head, and he and I think you might know James. Did I hear that? Yeah, 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 yeah. I so James Harden. he's a, he's a legend in in those establishments for sure, for sure. <laughs> Harden nigga, <laughs> Harden the nigga, nigga. Man. That's who fuck it up. Harden. I don't, I don't, I don't know if I can say these people. Names. No, you don't don't yeah, have to no. say names. But let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. I got one too. Travis Scott fucking up too. Fuck I bet. I bet, dude. That guy's a rock star. Nah, for sure. I saw him at Bonnaroo, and he was riding a fucking sixty foot dragon. He was like up on top of this fire breathing. Oh yeah, piece yeah, of the for set, sure, dude. For sure. It was like a rock and roll concert. Have you ever played at uh, Bonnaroo? What the hell is that? Tennessee. <laughs> it's like Coachella, but in Tennessee. That's a festival. Yeah. Nah, I did Governor's Ball. Coachella. Yeah, we've been, yep. What a uh, Lollapalooza. Now, hey, what my booking agent? I want to do Bonnaroo. Dude, do Bonnaroo. <laughs> hey, what bro. the fuck? I think I'm eligible for that. Hey, we used to go, <laughs> we used to go like every year, get a bus and like me, like five of my buddies, their wives, and like we go out there, some of my teammates, and they have like a golf cart service. They take you to every stage and you stand up in the VIP. You're in like the artist tent. Right. You meet motherfuckers back there. It's super cool. I mean, like, it's a big ass festival. It's like the size of Coachella, I would say. Yeah. Um, so we were talking about strip clubs and James Harden. I'm gonna ask you this: When you see athletes out partying, was, do you notice the difference in the personalities between football and basketball players? I was just the way we ask, carry ourselves in clubs. Football players just be like normal. One of the guys, you know what I'm saying? Like more down to earth. Yeah. They like football players be more like gang and like nah, bro. This is my bro. I don't care if this is Sergeant on the team. Yeah. He with us. Yeah. Like we don't go fuck about nothing. That shit. We're getting everybody in the club. Yeah, yeah. NBA players act like rappers. <laughs> they be known in the bitch too. <laughs> they be like, hold on, what's going on? Hold on, I'm fake bougie. Oop, I don't see you. Oops. Yeah. Hey, hey, I see you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They hit you with some old funny ass shit like that, but not with me. But even like, bro, I feel like they all motherfucking genuine because it's like shit. They we, we want to be NBA players. They want to be rappers. Yeah. So shit, we was all successful. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Shit like that. But they just don't bring their bitches around the rappers though. Yeah. They know, they better. know better, bro. They know better. <laughs> they know better. Hey, how about this? Talk about Motherfuckers that. bring their significant others courtside down in Houston or Yeah, but look, I'm gonna step right now, too. but in it, but see, tricking at an all time high. Yeah. The rappers don't got that motherfucking NBA money. They don't got that. Right. I don't give a fuck who you is. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like the top rapper got a rookie contract. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> so shit. Yeah. So like when you're in their world, and right. if you take a check to like, you right. know, the I don't know what the fucking stadium is down there, but like if you sit courtside with your with your wife, like <laughs> that could go bad, dude. Yeah, nah, you gotta go get you a motherfucking skybox. Like it's a skybox. Yeah. Yeah. You're like, you're like, baby, you see them, them niggas little motherfuckers, man. They <laughs> tiny as hell down. Those little bitches down yeah, here, yeah. dude. <laughs> Look how they scary. go hand in hand though, just entertainment, like you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it's just like it just go like this. Cause like the rappers in the in the and the athletes been competing all, all the way through school. Yeah, I think the rappers ain't number the cool popular kids. Yeah, they were fucking the hoes. Then y'all was just fucking all the hoes. The job athletes. <laughs> it's the same thing. Like yeah. you feel me? Yeah, yeah. The uh, thing is though, in school I was so cool. My brother's an athlete. My little brothers and them they was the athletes and the cool niggas. Yeah. At the uh, same time, I, I was fucked up. <laughs> I'm like, oh, so you go to the pep rally. I couldn't because they yeah. said I'm going to excite the game, right? Yeah. But oh, you just beat up three niggas, and then you in the pep rally with the jersey on. 
I'm like, God damn. That's so fucking funny. Like, bro, high school, I ain't gonna lie. For you us, were just a menace, huh? Hell yeah, I loved it too. You were just like, like, because like I was a menace, like bad. freshman, sophomore year, selling drugs, bringing yeah. guns to school, fighting. Yeah. Then like junior year, senior year, the pranks, taking people, egging people houses, yep. taking people motherfucking tires off. We and shit. Like that too. once I like once I got to the suburbs, I showed them how to thug. I'm like, Yo, bro. We might go get a hundred hamsters, let them off in the school. Yeah. We put them baby all wait, on wait, the floor. Wait, wait, like, wait, wait, I know, like, wait, Thursday. Wait. Hold on, hold on. This hold your crazy. horses. Yeah. Hold your thought, man. Don't get lost. So, look. <laughs> <laughs> we used to put baby all on the floor. And, like, you know those nerds that run to um, lunch? Yeah. They used to be busting their ass <laughs> hard. And, look, I remember the, um, so, look, they knew that cream click had something to do with it. Yeah. Like, in school, like, I was gang banging, but as far as school, you know, you young. We was a fly click. We had like kicks, roll everything around me. That's cream. Mm -hmm. So we had on all the Jordans, all the sneakers, mm -hmm. the snapback skinnies, all that shit. So look, the principal came to lunch and made an announcement like, yeah, we on to you guys. It's putting on the baby all inside the hallway. We don't want to see it again. If we catch you, you're getting expelled. And when he stepped off, he stepped in the baby all the <laughs> his ass. <laughs> Went down in history. Went down in history. It was going down. <laughs> yeah, then, the then like it was this fat ass teacher. She had um, <laughs> she, she had um testified on like come a couple of my um well um, my homie Terrell. Yeah, you know what I'm saying Terrell Clemens back when like they was like robbing houses and shit. Yeah. and we got her ass. She tried with some stilettos. Her big black ass. She fell, bust out, <laughs> bum, <laughs> bitch. Fuck wrong with you. And bro, they used to always say I was gonna be most like unsuccessful in school. I was a clown. Yeah, like bro. My teacher really told me I ain't gonna be shit. Cause I chopped on her have husband you, before. Have you have you been able to go back to a reunion yet? Hell no, they don't fuck with me. No school. <laughs> oh, they won't let you? The only school is U of H. I'm like, I never went here. Yeah. I used to come sell weed up here. Uh -huh. Like, what the <laughs> fuck, my nigga? So like, yo. But Talking yeah. about we have to circle back now. Oh yeah, circle back. <laughs> Where the hell did you get a hundred hamsters from? Man, so all right, he's my boy John Shalala. <laughs> he was on the fourth. So my brother was an athlete and was a star. Yeah. And I was the cool kid. So I had the whole football team. So he was the quarterback. And like, his people had like pet stores and shit. Then there's a nigga named Adi Baca. He was like a motherfucking <laughs> linebacker, white boy. His people was racist, but he loved to learn, love us. <laughs> Adi was a nigga at heart. That's how I be in Texas. Like, everybody ain't racist for real, for real, bro. Yeah. They might be a certain way, but then when they get to meet us and learn yeah. us and shit like that, so. <clears throat> So like Adi had like chains and they all had trucks, F one fifties to drink beer inside the motherfucking parking lot. I come sell them some little weed. So I look, I'm like, hey bro, you got a truck? Yeah, I'm like, bro, fuck the teachers, let's pull up all the speed bumps. So that was the first thing we did, ripped up all the speed bumps. We came to that bitch cruising. I had a white Honda Civic. I came to that bitch mm, pushing sixty. You know that's fast as hell in the Civic. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Shit and like noisy. that. So hell yeah. So like I utilized that. Like even so, like I used to have beef with a certain group of niggas. You know what I'm saying? I remember one day, we were probably going to even fight them, but half of my clique is on the football team. Mm -hmm. So, no, yeah, yeah, they're on the football team, but they was working the rodeo. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like the Houston rodeo, they come through. Yep. So yep. they gave them all jobs. So the only people I could find was the white boys, so they didn't work. Yeah. I went to the mall to fight these niggas with 80 white boys, and they was running. <laughs> they was running. That is so they, fucking We fun. was whooping their ass, all kind of shit, busting their windows. I'm like, well, take it to... Beat him up until Adi caught one of my niggas. I'm like, hey, nah, hey, Adi, watch your fucking mouth. Hey, man, fuck him, dude. I'm a cream cleaver. Hey, don't say nigga, dude. I know that. You know what I'm saying? But like, but like, you know what I'm saying? You got a little too into the situation. You just a little too far, buddy. And then look, so then like once I graduated, Adi had a brother named Colin Baca. And that's how him and my little brother was. Yeah. But like my little brother was like the star tailback and all that shit. So. Yeah. Hell yeah, I had like the most fun of my life was high school, bro. Football? Um or just in general. Just in general. I ain't play I, I ain't play football at that time. Like when I back when I played football, it was back when like, I was going to A. Lee Pacings. Yeah. Like in the hood and shit. Like what grade is that? What's the last grade uh, you played football? Tenth grade, ninth, okay. ninth, tenth grade. You I heard you say something. Between your one school and the other school, like you went from the hood to I don't know if you the high school musical. Well, no, I mean like <laughs> what's what's tougher than the hood? Like, you know, like the wards down in Houston. Man, it was like, so at Hastings, it was like New Orleans came, so it was Houston versus New Orleans. My whole apartment complex was New Orleans, but them niggas didn't go to school. So when I went to school, I'm with my Houston Green, niggas, so I'm yeah. beating up New Orleans niggas. I mean, we had beat up this one dude, then like we just had to walk down, it, it ain't Bear Run Road, but this is like the side Road, you cross over to go to the field house. 
like before they fixed the ditch. So we get in there, and then the same water nigga that we jumped, he like, oh yeah, bitch, we on that, son. What's up? I'm like, you wanna get beat up again? This nigga went in the bushes and grabbed a chopper. I took off running like, I ran so fast. I'm like, bro, what the fuck is the hall monitors, bro? We're just kids. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> nigga switched up quick. But like, yeah, I really learned how to thug like doing like Hurricane Katrina, like on some gangster shit. Like, this is when I see my first AK-47. Like, you know what I'm saying? Shit like that. So you like, said he went to the bushes. So is that something like when y'all went to school, you would just have to hire your guns like outside? I ain't know, but we had him in the backpack, bro. That nigga right there was clever. Bro. He been through some shit. He had to. <laughs> just came through Katrina. He was trying to kill something. <laughs> like, we even jump you like that, bro. Like, relax. Christ. You know, does that do you ever look back and think it all like, man, it sucks. I wish I could have had more of a like a normal childhood, or is that normal? Man, I feel like that's normal. Yeah. That shit normal. Because when you said before before uh before I played freeze tag, I played kick door. Yeah. Before I heard the word romance, romance I, I heard, heard the word, word hoe. Yeah. And I thought about, you know, like my fucking childhood, you know, right. like and you meet people now that it's way different for. Right. But like I kind of wonder if you look back ever and you're just like, man, like I grew up fast, fuck. Nah, cause I still had a childhood. Like everything I really like went to doing shit. I wasn't raised to do. My mama ain't raised me like yeah. this. My daddy ain't raised me like that. Even though they had their lives, like my daddy did what he did, fraud and shit like that. My mama always tried to. She did what she did, but they always taught us right. Try to keep a roof. Oh, these hoes cold. Mm. Yep. <laughs> and try to keep like a roof over our head and shit. Yeah. Sorry about your dad, man. We we talked yeah, a little yeah, bit earlier. Sure, sure. R.I.P. Um, Papa Max. So yeah. So we gonna celebrate his name though. Yeah, I mean, and oh, you God. listen like. Are you doing all right? Uh, mentally, yeah, I'm in a good headspace. Yeah, I wasn't mentally good when I made way of the world. That's why it took so long. Really? Like you know what I'm saying? I had to get right. Like way of the world before that, it was also killer kill everybody kill fucking die bitch you a hoe. <laughs> Fuck you! I miss my brother shit. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But I think well, I made that motherfucker when I was 31 or some shit like that. Yeah. I had to be like 30 or something. So I, it was just showing like the mature max. So yeah, you know what I'm saying? Now with this tape, I got both. It's like the angel on my shoulder and the devil yeah. pulling back and forth. So you gonna get that Trigger Maxo back. Yeah. This tape. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Good storytelling, like some real in-depth storytelling. Like I'm independent and I'm going for it. Like yeah. I'm rapping again, bro. Like yeah. not saying rapping again, but I'm rapping. Like yeah. niggas can't rap no more. You seem you seem excited about the album coming out. And yeah, you see a sure. lot of time with artists when like Artists usually in this time period when the album, they seem a little stressed or not sure about dates or worry about things like that. You on the other hand, you seem like you super excited for it. You think it has anything to do with you being independent? And is it that like you get to kind of make your own timeline and drop what you when you want? Or what do you think you credit that to? Me being independent and like everything I'm dropping right now is doing better numbers than the way of the world. Right. Word. Yeah, and that's the only yeah, thing you, know you can ask for is to keep doing better, right? Hell yeah, I'm in competition with myself. Hell yeah. You feel yeah. me? Well, the world was more critically acclaimed. Like, it got me on the Coachella's, a lot of Palooza's, all that shit. But as far as like super turn up, turn up with like numbers and shit like that to me, nah. I mean, it, I feel like it was my best piece of work, but maybe just the headspace I was in, I didn't like it. Like, back when I dropped Brandon Banks, yeah. whoo, time of my life. And I and I mostly A and R that myself. Shout out Jay Grand, and, um, Sony RCA. That's my brother. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Oh, white man. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why. There's a few good ones. Me, There's a few good ones. <laughs> I don't know. You know what I'm saying. No, nah, man, nah. I mean, it's a lot of good ones. No, I know. I'm fucking around. Yeah. I mean, like, like, like in this you know studio, there's, there's at least two. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> me and Ezra. Chris Long. Um, yeah, for sure. Hey, but no, <laughs> for sure. I'm fucking with for you guys. Sure. That's the joke. For you sure. White mother. But nah, <laughs> yeah. But like, you know what I'm saying, like. I'm just in a good space, like yeah. shit. Yeah, but like, does that, it, it, that can fuck it up though, huh? If you don't feel good while you're making the music, even if it's great, objectively, it can cloud the way you think about that that project? Um, Yeah. Yeah. Hell fucking yeah. Yeah. Hell like shit, yeah, and then I be overthinking shit a lot. Me too. But it's part of the process. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, but hell yeah. Um, What were you struggling with with Way to the World? I know it's a long grieving. Way. I ain't out of grief. Yeah, that's yeah. I made the trip to California. I made it the day after my my, my brother died. Yeah, I had to get it. I, like I had to get that emotion out right there. Yeah. Then like shit, just a lot of shit. Like eleven fifty nine, the beating shit cool, but that's not how I wanted to come into it. Shit like that. Um, it just felt old to me. Yeah, that's wild. Oh, but yeah. shit, everybody love it though. But everybody loves it. I get better like. 
That's my best album. I just like yeah. the I like the I production. Lie to you. I love yeah. the production. I think right. you always rap your ass off. Shout out my nigga Tej. Me and him always. Tej, yeah. I, yeah. Who's Tej? Because you did, <laughs> who's Tej? Because you did a thing with Hit Boy. There's one yeah. song with Hit Boy, right? And then I was just going through it, and I saw Tej's name above. Hell yeah, that's um. He did Roaches. Okay. Him and my boy Asa. What else they did? They, they did um. K Row. They did a lot of beats for me. Yeah. They were like shit. They was really my like my executive producers. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Except for um for um Brandon Banks. He worked on it like a little bit, but we always bump heads yeah. and he fell out. And then that's our way of the world. I just let him have it. Right. You know what I'm saying? But like he very musically inclined. He challenged me, he pushed me, he believed in me. And um I ain't see nobody care more about my music than him. Is it is it hard for you to pick beats? Or like like when you're just trying to pick for an album if you I mean if somebody 13, suck. <laughs> and yeah, but if I hear a beat, I'm going on it. Did, did you grow up liking like I grew up loving samples because of the New York stuff. Hell yeah. Did you is that kind of where you lean or like you know we were talking about Rick Ross's production. I think Rick right. has like impeccable taste. Right. You know it's like uh, it really feels like you know you can't define kind of what his style is. You know like uh, what'd you grow up liking from a production standpoint? I love like the I get money like like yeah. the little samples like mm -hmm. the East Coast Swiss Beats productions. Swiss yeah. yeah. Shit like that, um, cool kids, Mikey Rocks, shit like that. I feel like Chuck English is one of the greatest producers ever. Mm. Dude, I I sent, I sent something to sorry to interrupt. I sent something to Primo, uh, DJ Premier, mm -hmm. about you were coming. He's like, I fucking love his stuff. Uh, for yeah, sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah ain't from Houston, right? DJ Premier, yeah, right? Originally. Yeah, he is from. Yeah, yeah, but I just said he was from Houston in another motherfucking thing. Go, yeah, hell yeah, now hell yeah, he called the motherfucker. He's the man. Yeah, um, Mike Dean. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's you. Like, I, I feel like. I gotta go to Mike Dean to get my shit mixed and mastered for this tape. Even if I'm independent, yeah. I spend whatever it is, you know what I'm saying? But, yup, um, production wise, who got hard beats? Timberland got some hard ass shit. I always, it, cause we were talking about Outkast too. I loved Outkast stuff. I think mm -hmm. some, the production on Aquem and I, their third album was like insane. So, Wayne. how easy is it for you to think, like, think up a freestyle? Man. Depends it's easy for me to speak up a freestyle shit. It's like girls going wild showing tits. <laughs> <laughs> it's like three piggies with straws and hay, but they ain't got no bricks. <laughs> it's like eating a lot of creatine after workout and gotta take a shit. Uh, <laughs> I'm talking about that shit hard. Damn, dude. Hard like a rhino peel. <laughs> <laughs> I made a lot of fucking money off these vacuum seals. Mm. I walk in the club with the 30 showing, I don't pack conceal. Hell yeah, and when you die, we're gonna see the op mama's a big bouquet of daffodils. deals. <laughs> <laughs> I got twin F and N's, call them Phil and Lil. Hey. Hmm. Send me back to the den, cause to the judge I won't squeal. I made a meal off them fucking pills. So Adderall, really not bad after all. Yep. I mean, I already sip leaned in alcohol. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yep. If I fuck a bitch, it can't be dry. I need that Niagara Falls. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. Bars. Dude, that, like, to me, and you're just fucking around. <laughs> hey, he's just fucking around. Like, it's crazy that your head works Bars. Out. It's Bars. crazy. Do you think some people tuck freestyles away for rainy days? Like, and they yeah, act but like. See, it got to be, bro. If you go watch my four master flicks, it suck. You know why? Because I try to remember some shit and repeat some shit and it suck. Yeah. You know, if I just would have went there. Turn off the beat and, off the and head, ask man. me something. Yeah. I just go off the head. I can do that, but I can only do that when I'm high as hell. Yeah, yeah. that's why I gotta get high in the. I gotta get this high yeah. to go rap. But if I get too high, I just gotta record because yeah. you only got an hour out of me, probably yeah. an hour thirty. So the question I was gonna ask you was, will you ever take us to Nigeria if you go one time? Can we go? Yes. And when we go, we gotta go with my brother Burner Boy. How much do you go? I went one time when I was two years old. That's it. So you just want, do you want to go I was supposed to go, but I knew that my, my father hill was declining. Yeah. I want to stay with him. Yeah. So we got to go. I got to go. I got to go see. I like, I got land in Nigeria. Yeah. All kind of shit. So. I got a, I got an invitation for you, man. Um, you, since you're in this fitness shit, one year you should come climb Kilimanjaro in Tanzania with us. Word. Yeah, we do it like every other year. Okay. So we get some ball players. We get ball players and military guys to go up. How hard is it, bro? <laughs> So that's where I I just want to be honest with give you. Give me a workout. The stair workout with the chains if will give you, me right? Yes, dude. If you do stair workout with the chains for like 
you know, three times a week for 30 minutes to start. And then just go hiking. I know it's flat as fuck down in Houston. But isn't there like, <laughs> is, like, like is there like hill country, you know, that you can access down there? I mean, I'd be in LA. They got the Yeah, if you're in LA, you can fucking hike all the time. Right. This is the mountain. I'm killing with Yeah, I, I yeah. use this in a bar. Never like, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to where the snow at. Yeah, but the snow's not always up there. Cause that's like a certain time of year. That's, that's what it looks like at the top. Look, you can see the whole fucking the whole thing. Like, so like, how many miles? He's not. That? He's not doing it. I know he's not doing it. How many miles is it? Is uh, it the it's like thirty-five, forty. I'm gonna get a helicopter. I'm gonna see. You get a helicopter? <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you come over and just hang out, man? Yeah, hell yeah, I'm gonna come. He asked you, he asked what? Question. What do you say? Go ahead. You, you made it to the top. Yeah, I made it to the top. Yeah. How many times? Like five, six times. Oh, I'm <laughs> no so confused. Look at him, like, yeah, I made it to the top. What's up, dude? Yeah, bro. Hey, One of you know, hey, you know, being around ball players, you know, being around. Now imagine you got a bunch of them on the fucking mountain, people walking fast as shit. Like I'm like, slow down, man. Right. Um. Yeah, that'd be dope. We need to come to Houston. We need to do a weekend and, and see the Texans, kill some hogs, and tell uh, Mexican OT we said hello, and tell Big X the plug we said hi. Hell yeah. I got you. We I got fucking you. love Big He's X. Going up right now. Yeah, so anything you want people to know about projects you have coming up, other than the album or anything? I, I, I'm going to get out of break now. I'm going to be the first one to get the exclusive. I got personification coming. With personification, I give you a break now. It's going to be like like I said, I got the devil on one shoulder and the angel on one shoulder. Yep. But it's going to show you the different personas of Maxo. Yep. You got Trigger Maxo. Yep. That's, that's Maxo with the headband and the gold reel. You got Maxo C, the flash script you ever see. That's like bang the bus, Maxo, very sex appeal. Like, you know, like the fat nigga that's sexier than Ross and Biggie? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's me. All right. Then you got motherfucking um, Way of the World, Maxo. Yeah. And I feel like they go back to, to roaches, like storytelling perspective, big homie type Maxo. Then shit, you got Maxo Cream. Yeah. Then you got MF Quantum Yep. That's me. Yep. You feel me? That's, and then with that tape at the end, when you get that MF Quantum Biosa, that's really what I'm gonna be running with for like the rest of my career. Really? I ain't changing my name, but I'm saying like that style, style. That format. Yeah, it's just like taking, like when you switch from yeah. you see me fighting style to like to um Kazuma on uh, yeah. fighting style. Or like Lloyd when he switched to cover two last night and just could not figure out <laughs> what the fuck was going on. So so uh that's that's cool though. That comes with age, right? It just comes with experience and age. For sure. And there's no way to do, there's no way to learn about yourself other than the ups and the downs. You can't skip the steps, right? You know what I mean. So that's awesome, man. And well, before we get out of here, yeah. Oh, make this sure, make sure you get your court. Yeah, get, look, we we talked oh, about yeah. this last night for for Houston sports professional sports teams. Hey, Maxo does not feel plugged in enough. I don't know what the fuck going on. So so if, shout out to Astros. Yeah, what shout do you out want? The Texans. Shout what do you the, want? The Texans go up and above. Show me the most love. Shout out Cher. I love the Texans. Yeah. Rockets. I did a little freestyle cypher, all that for y'all. I need courtside tickets, bro. Like, fuck all that shit. I'm yeah. a rapper. I'm from Houston, bro. I popped this shit, bro. I have a track hawk and Lamborghini. I have I got my car broken into at a Rockets game. You owe him something. Yo. Hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I need to pull in the tunnel. Like every time I go to a performance, I pull in the tunnel. VIP. I need to pull in the tunnel, see the players. Hey, what's up? You know what I'm saying? And go and get a court side ticket every game like Spike Lee. I deserve that. Tap in. Make that shit work. You feel Houston, me? Houston, Spike Lee. That's oh, God. Cool. Yeah. Astros, shot the Astros. They show mad love. Texans, the most love. Even though the Astros, like them even though the Astros bang trash cans. Oh, my God. <laughs> what the hell <laughs> the that mean? The cheating thing, dude. The cheating thing? You don't remember the cheating thing? I don't know nothing about the Astros cheating. Shout out oh, to Oh, wow, dude. That's incredible. <laughs> you know He's trying to get the tickets. He's trying to get the tickets. You know I poke with uh, Hey, Max O Cream, everybody. It was great having you, dude. Thanks for coming through. Max O.